Master Chef is back. I'm desperate, really, really desperate to win. Two expert judges to decide who wins. We're looking for a great cook who can make it as a professional. Someone to turn out exceptional food under pressure. I personally think I'm good enough to win Master Chef. I'm not here just to, for a day trip. The prize to work in a top restaurant. This competition just gets tougher. Whoever wins, it's going to change their life. I really want to go all the way. Master Chef is going large. These six contestants all want to become the next star restaurant chef. But only one of them will get through to Friday's quarter-final. They face three tough tests. They have to invent a dish from scratch. Explain to me why. Why did you put all those things in a pot, including the chicken? They have to survive the pressure of working in a professional kitchen. I'll give you two minutes, not two and a half. Come on. And they have to impress the judges with their own recipes. It's really elegant. All in just two days. Cook us a great plate of food, guys. 40 minutes, your time starts now. Good luck. It's the quick elimination test. Deciding which three stay are judges John Tarode, top chef and restaurateur. They have to understand good food now. Not later, now. And food writer and ingredients expert Greg Wallace. I want to see someone working with confidence and a lightness of touch. The contestants have 40 minutes to cook a dish using any of today's ingredients, which are chicken, gammon, pasta, cream, cannellini beans, potato, cabbage, leek and tarragon. 32-year-old Zoe is fascinated by the science of food and she loves to experiment with different flavours in the kitchen. I was a scientist at university and still enjoy my geeky conversations and talking about molecules. Hello, Zoe. Hi there. What are you going to cook that's going to get you through to the next round? I'm going to cook a chicken mousse type thing, um, wrapped in leeks. This is quite a complicated thing to be doing first round of MasterChef, Zoe. You roast the chicken, take it apart and blitz it. It's actually quite, quite a simple, simple method. So how would you make a career out of food? My dream job is going into a hospital and helping them to rewrite their menus for patients. Ross, you are ten minutes in. We've got chicken in the oven already. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. I'm cooking bubble and squeak with chicken and a creamy leek and tarragon sauce. Mmm! 23-year-old Ross has dreamt of opening his own restaurant since school. I want people to eat my food. I think that's what it is. I want to be able to cook a meal for someone, put it down in front of them and see their reaction to eating it. What are you cooking for us? Chicken and beans. Chicken and beans. You've got leeks there. What are you going to do with the leek? Uh, put it in the chicken and beans. <laughs> Are the chicken and the beans all in the same pot? Yeah. Do you do much of that, putting ingredients into the pot and, and seeing what happens? A lot of it, yeah. OK, that's terrifying, Val. <laughs> Mother of four, Val is desperate to pursue her dream of starting a catering company. I've always loved cooking. I think it's very creative. And I'd quite like to be creative. You've had 20 minutes. You are halfway. All feeling good? Oh, yeah. Nigel, it strikes me that you have been cooking for a while. What's oh, yeah. your style of food? Uh, my style's very mixed because I've travelled a lot. I've cooked in different places. And I've lived in the Middle East for a long time. I've lived in India. You confident? Yes. Nigel works in local government, but now feels it's time to pursue his dream. I would like to open some sort of international deli that would have things from all over the world. Rob, tell us what you do for a day job. Uh, I'm a police officer in Coventry. Would you want to give up the life of a policeman for a life in food? Food has always been a passion. I never got to carry it on from school. What would you dearly love to do, Rob? Pub, restaurant type thing, good food, simple, good atmosphere.
Police officer Rob believes he has the necessary skills to deal with the demands of a professional kitchen. Coming from my job, I don't get pressurised very easily and things don't tend to phase me. If something goes wrong, it's, it's improvising, adapting and overcoming. Your uh, origin is Sri Lankan? Sri Lankan. How do we sort of describe the style of food that you cook? I'm playing safe today. If I get through, I'll show you my Sri Lankan food. I, I'll show you my true talents. Neelika wants to win MasterChef so she can pursue her ultimate foodie dream. I want to change my life completely and totally. I want to write a cookery book on Sri Lankan cookery. Guys, you have one minute. Bring it together, you have one minute. That's it, guys. Time's up. All done, all dusted. Mother of four Val is hoping her one-pot wonder of chicken and beans with pine nuts and paprika will put her through to the next round. Explain to me why. Why did you put all those things in a pot, including the chicken? Because I like things cooked in a pot quickly and easily. That's... doesn't look like it's cooked there. Let's get right. It should be. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. We have a small problem in understanding what your food tastes like because we can't taste it. Val, what are we going to do here? Oh, cry. Police officer Rob is serving chicken and pasta in a white wine and cream sauce. The creamy, soft texture of the sauce is great with the pasta. Your chicken's very nicely cooked, and the creaminess of it is absolutely lovely. Thank you. 23-year-old Ross wants to impress the judges with his roast chicken in tarragon sauce and bubble and squeak. You say bubble and squeak, I watch you sort of do potatoes and cabbage together, put it in a ring and put it in the oven. Is bubble and squeak not fried? It's supposed to be fried, but I was running a bit low on time. Chicken soft, cooked very nicely. I still have a problem with this bubble and squeak. As fried bubble and squeak, you are ready for lumps of boiled potato. As a mash, you're not. You're expecting it to be smooth throughout. Experimental Zoe is trying to impress with a complex dish of chicken mousse wrapped in leek with a white wine sauce. I think it looks quite attractive, actually, and quite inventive. The textures are lovely because you go through the crunch of the leek and you get to the soft chicken inside. You've got far too much wine in there and far too much tarragon. This is quite a lot of work. It's something very, very extraordinary to be doing at the first stage of MasterChef. Good on you for doing it. The chicken tastes good. The leeks taste good. It's very acidic sauce and it needs some salt. Is all your food this way out, though, Zoe? I'm probably more experimental than I should be, um, and that's not always a good thing. International food lover Nigel is hoping to wow with his gammon in a stew of cannellini beans and leeks. I like the flavour in your pork. There's very little flavour in your beans. And adding the leek was a disastrous choice. I like cream leeks and tarragon, I like the gammon, I like the beans, I don't know if they all work together. Neelika dreams of writing about food, but will her spicy chicken and gammon kebabs with matchstick potatoes and cabbage salad prove she has the skill to cook it? The flavours are really interesting and actually quite intense. There's lots of flavours in there. Your meat is beautifully cooked and fantastically flavoured. The chips crispy, the cabbage light and the slight citrus, all good. Thank you. I think we've got a tough judging decision ahead of us and you are in for a long wait. I'm sorry, off you go. <laughs> Six cooks. Six contestants. John, we've got to pick three of these to go through. I think there's one person we do know about, and that's probably Val. The chicken wasn't cooked, and it looked pretty awful. 
it's just the worst feeling in the world when he opened up the chicken and I thought, no, please. So anyway, disaster. You can't chuck stuff in a pot and expect it to come out good. I think we have to say, ta-da. Uh, how did you feel about Neelika? The kebabby things, with all the herbs and the flavourings, was really tasty. I like her. There is no doubt in that the girl has got talent. Yeah, there's one person we're not impressed by yes. that much, and that's Ross. Saying going to make bubble and squeak and then not actually frying it... I agree with you. I definitely chose the right dish. I just didn't, um, just didn't execute as well as uh, I can. All right, so Ross goes as well. What about Rob? I, uh, Rob most certainly gave a decent plate of food, that's for sure. Creamy sauce, lovely soft moist chicken, well-cooked pasta, good dish. OK, well, Rob and Neelik are in, Val and Ross out. Now it's Zoe and Nigel. Let's talk about Zoe, shall we? I like the fact that she wanted to go a little bit complicated with her food at this stage. Zoe knew how to make a sauce. She started off with a roux, she added the milk to it, she got the flavourings wrong, but she knew the process. Also, she did bash that chicken up and make a mousse that she put within the leeks. This is tricky stuff, and she did manage to pull it off, mostly. I think my leeks and my chicken mousse went really well, and then I did this completely disastrous and horrible sauce. Zoe's saying she's inspired by the chemistry of cooking. That chemistry of cooking, is that enough to make your master chef? Well, what do you see in Nigel? Well, I think, actually, I think Nigel can cook. I think he's been cooking for a very, very long time. The way he was cooking the gammon and putting some flavourings on it, I thought, yeah, and then it came together looking like I don't know what. I've muddled the ingredients up a little bit and would rather go back and do it again. The thing about Nigel, though, is actually the ideas, the components were really good. He just couldn't get it to come together coherently. Then th this is the thing, and I'll underline that, I don't know. Well, who's going to be? As you know, three of you are staying and three of you are going home. Val. I'm sorry, it's not you, Val. Neelika. You're staying with us. Well done. Ross. You're leaving us, Ross, sorry. Rob, you're staying. Zoe or Nigel? Zoe, you're getting another go, Zoe. <laughs> really happy. Really excited, wondering how it's going to be possible to get any sleep tonight. I'm feeling quite confident now and very, very competitive now. So nerve wracking when you're standing there waiting for your name to be called out. When it is, is it or isn't it? It is, and I'm over the moon. For the moment, they can relax, but tomorrow the pressure is on as they face two more daunting tests. It's early on day two, and the contestants arrive at the exclusive Mandarin Oriental Hotel in London's Knightsbridge. They will be cooking Pan-Asian food in the hotel's Park restaurant. Head chef Chris Tomling will be scrutinising Rob, Neelika and Zoe during the frantic lunchtime service. I've got lots in for lunch today, so I think we better get cooking. It's 12 o'clock and service begins. Right, guys, first check of the day. You order one salmon naan bread, one Hainan chicken, one teriyaki duck. Yes, chef. Zoe is on a starter of warm naan bread, which she has to bake herself, topped with cream cheese, smoked salmon and salad. But straight away, Zoe is having a problem with her presentation. The salad needs to be a lot neater. Yep. Take it away, bring it back again, please. Rob's in charge of the Hainan chicken. Poached chicken in Asian stock with pak choy, rice and chilli sauce. His dish is complex, but Rob's calm approach means he doesn't panic. It's all about teamwork and definitely, yeah, see myself doing it again. He gets his first dish out on time and it's perfect. That's fine, very good. Okay, thank you. I need one duck now. 
Neelika's main course is teriyaki duck with green onion and mushroom wrapped in Chinese radish. She starts well, cooking the duck perfectly, and she gets the presentation right. That's fine. OK. Thank you, Chef. Yeah. But one hour into service, the restaurant is full and Neelika is struggling to keep up with the constant demand. Neelika, we've got three duck on order. Are you aware of that? Yes, Chef. Middle of service, we're just seem to be grinding to a halt now. This is a time where we get, need to get moving. I have never worked in an environment like this. This is absolutely manic. Can you please? With orders piling up, the sous chef has to step in to help her. Zoe's dish is proving popular, but she's still struggling with her salad garnish. Take that away, please, and just tidy the salad up as it was discussed on the previous one. Right now, please, right now. How do they do this all the time? They must just die of, like, adrenaline overkill. OK, sick one. OK, that lettuce is terrible. Take it away, please. I've told you about five times now. Sorry. After two more attempts, Zoe still gets it wrong. I'm not very good at lining up salad. Hi, Nan, Rob. One minute, chef. Meanwhile, Rob's police training keeps him calm as he quietly churns out plate after plate, all to chef's exacting standards. Right, that's looking good, Rob. In the left, please. Two hours later, and the contestants have served over a hundred covers. It's time for John and Greg to talk to head chef Chris. Tell me about Zoe today. I felt she threw herself into it 110%, but I had to keep telling her about the lettuce, which was all over the shop. How about knee liquor? The cooking of the duck and the slicing of the duck, I thought she did very well. But halfway through, she sort of lost the plot, as if she wasn't completely focused on what was going on in front of her. What about Rob? He had a very complex dish to put together, and yeah. he, he put it together very well. If you had to employ one of these guys today, which one would it be? I would have to go with Rob, which is very good effort for a first time. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Yesterday, Rob impressed with his chicken and cream pasta, and he came out on top in the kitchen. Can he keep this up and guarantee himself a place in Friday's quarter-final? Neelika didn't cope well under pressure in the restaurant, but she impressed the judges with her cooking flair. Now she needs to wow them one more time. Zoe surprised the judges with her experimental chicken mousse, but didn't fare well in the kitchen. She now needs to cook the meal of her life to win. You have one hour. Cook like you want to be a quarter-finalist. Let's go. They have to cook a two-course meal of their own design, and only one will win a place in Friday's quarter-final. Tell us what you are cooking for us, eh? Um, I'm cooking partridge with traditional trimmings of bread sauce. And dessert? Zabaglioni with rhubarb. You're talking about traditional food here, yet yesterday you gave us the impression that you are an experimentalist. Why are we suddenly going for something so safe? Well, zabaglioni is quite geeky. Um, when you're whisking up those egg yolks, it's making that nice sort of froth, and that's quite, that's quite interesting the way that that works. An egg concoction, emulsification of eggs and sugar, masala or Madeira. What's your culinary dream now, Zoe? <laughs> to get through the next hour without losing my head. We've all eaten that dish. It is such a classic British dish. And there is no room for any slip-up anywhere. It has to be done in such a way it doesn't look rusty, it doesn't look rude, it doesn't look rough. It looks finished and beautiful. You have had 20 minutes. Neelika now has her chance to shine with the Sri Lankan food she wants to write about. I'm making a mutton biryani, which is a, a festival dish. Followed by? Uh, pancakes with uh, passion fruit mousse. Have you worked out the timings on this? Yes, 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 yes. I'm fine, I'm fine. Do you want yes. to win this competition? Yes, I do, I do. Look at the energy I have. Whirlwind that is going on in that corner of the kitchen is quite incredible. My biggest concern with Nidika right now is that dessert, a pancake with white chocolate and passion fruit after this very, very rich, very, very heavily spiced dish. It may be frantic in Nidika's kitchen, however, policeman Rob is taking his usual calm and steady approach. 
Rob, what is your menu? Comfy of salmon to start with pickled cucumber and then um, belly of pork on a fondant potato and a baked onion. Rob, how do you confit your salmon? Well, I'm doing it in olive oil, slow poaching it in olive oil. Is it the stuff champions are made of, Rob? The flavours are there. Food doesn't have to be complicated to be flavoursome, to be enjoyed. It sounds great, but it's not difficult to do. That is Rob's problem. We've got Rob, we've got Zoe and we've got Nina get in the room together. We've got three great cooks. One, minute. One minute. That's it! That's it! Neelika has made a spicy mutton biryani with poached egg. And for her dessert, she's serving pancake with mascarpone mousse and passion fruit sauce. I've got to say, it looks a bit messy. The onions and the cashew nuts are a bit burnt. Oh. I enjoy mutton very much. That's very well cooked, it's very nice, very soft. I was expecting a lot more spice. My mouth right now is absolutely full of flavour. Thank you. You have, however, burnt your onions, which make them go bitter at the end, which is not a flavour you want to have. No. And those lovely sweet cashew nuts, although they start off in your mouth being absolutely beautiful, override every single other thing inside that bowl. We'll move away from the biryani and onto your pud. Same as before, it does look messy. I know. The pancakes are too thick. Otherwise, the blend of the very, very sharp and sweet passion fruit is a perfect mixture with the cream. They're okay. They're pancakes with passion fruit and cream. I do not see cream, mascarpone, and things like that being served as a second course after beer running. Not really. But I thought I'll do something different today. Rob's starter is poached salmon with pickled cucumber and creme fraiche. His main is pork belly with fondant potatoes, baked onion, apple puree and cider sauce. It's full of flavour and it's done very, very well. It's a good first course. Thank you. Very, very soft salmon. The crunch of the little bits of cucumber is absolutely wonderful and cleansing. That's good, Rob. Thank you. From your very good salmon to your main course of pork, it's not quite crispy enough. It hasn't quite worked. The pork is tough. It's chewy. The potato is completely lost. The puree is acidic. <laughs> Saying that, Rob, I think you're that far away. Pork's too tough. Okay. I don't want a slice a fondant potato. That's that small and flat because you wanted to build towers on it. And it seems to me all your problems are stemming from a need to decorate and pretty your plate. Yesterday Zoe was experimental, but today she's playing it safe, serving partridge, game chips, bread sauce and red cabbage. For dessert she's made rhubarb topped with an Italian zabaglioni custard. The bird is cooked well. It's sweet. Sweet meat, sweet bread sauce, sweet cabbage. It needs a little bit more savoury. It's OK. It's cooked very well. I don't mind the sweetness of the cabbage. Your game chips are nice and crispy. I can't fault you that much on this at all. We'll get rid of your main. Zabaglione and rhubarb. Yep, that's right. Nicely cooked zabaglione. I 
I'm liking that a lot. I like the texture of the rhubarb. I like the sweetness of zabioni. I like the texture of zabioni. What I'm trying to understand is why you want to use great rhubarb with zabioni when actually you've got two desserts in a glass. I don't think it's particularly attractive pud. It's not something that you go, oh, to. Well, taste it then, All please. Right. All right. Well, I love the texture of zabioni. Rhubarb perfectly cooked. Zabliani's done very, very well. I don't, I don't see them together. Personally, I love this combination. I thank you for your efforts. Go outside and sweat it out. That's all you can do. <laughs> Master Chef looking for a quarter finalist. And there are three very different cooks in here. Are any of these three people capable of stepping up from the amateur to the pro? Neelika will not go any further with her food presented in that way. It simply isn't attractive enough food. The dish that, that I chose to cook today was really, really challenging in my view. And I think I did uh, quite a good job today. I have to admire anybody who can take 20 odd flavourings and get them into one dish and make them work. Nilika almost got them to work, but that dish should have been absolutely sublime. And she topped it off with burnt onions and burnt cashew nuts. You shouldn't put the burnt food on. Let's talk about Zoe. There were no glaring mistakes with Zoe's, and I think that's a good foundation to build upon. There were a few techniques there that she went through and did them well. The birds should have had a crispy skin. We had sweet bread sauce, sweet birds, sweet cabbage. It's not lovely at the moment, but it's, but it's competent. And I believe she can easily build from there. It wasn't perfect, but um, it was OK, and I don't think I disgraced myself. <laughs> Rob Sam was very, very good. Mm. It, it delivered beyond expectation. The texture of the, the cucumber was great. It was a great, great dish. Hopefully the judges saw my potential because I have lots of it. I thought the salmon tasted lovely. The pork belly was so ill-conceived that wasn't cooked enough. The sauce around the outside, the brown sauce, too thick, too sweet. Who's it going to be? We have made a decision. The person going through the next round. Zoe, congratulations, well done. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Really excited, and I had no sleep last night. I'm not going to stop cooking because this has given me great confidence and I have come to this stage because I'm good. Obviously I didn't come up to their standard of what they were looking for. That's why I'm going home. I'm really proud of myself. I'm really proud. Master Chef, we've got a quarter-final spot at the ready. The deep, rich fig. That is an absolute dream. On the knocky on table one, is that so hard, is it? It's not a complete dish. It's not the finished article. What a day.